I just told it to order us drinks to the studio. And you, and you didn't know about who you normally got your drinks from. It figured that out from the web. Yeah, it figured it out because it went on Uber Eats. It has yeah. my, my, my data, I guess. And it, I, we put it on the screen in real time so everyone at home could see the agent going through the internet, picking the drinks, adding a tip for the driver, putting my address in, putting my credit card details in. And then the next thing you see is the drinks show up. So yeah. that, that was one moment. And then the other moment was when I used a tool called Replit and I built software by just telling the agent what I wanted. Yes, it's amazing, right? It's amazing and terrifying at the same time. Yes. Because... And if you can build software like that, right? Yeah. Remember that the AI, when it's training, is using code. And if it can modify its own code, then it gets quite scary, right? Because it can modify itself. It can itself. change itself in a way we can't change ourselves. We can't change our innate endowment, right? There's nothing about itself that it couldn't change. On this point of joblessness, you have kids. I do. And they have kids? No. They don't have kids, so no grandkids yet. What would you be saying to people about their career prospects in a world of super intelligence? What should we, we be thinking about? Um, in the meantime, I'd say it's going to be a long time before it's as good at physical manipulation as us. Okay. And so a good bet would be to be a plumber. <laughs> Until the humanoid robots show up. In such a world where there is mass joblessness, which is not something that you just predict, but this is something that Sam Altman at OpenAI, I've heard him predict, and many of the CEOs, I mean, Elon Musk, I mm -hmm. watched an interview which I'll play on screen of him being asked this question, and it's very rare that you see Elon Musk silent for 12 seconds or whatever it was. 